Morning everyone, David Eco Tune. I haven't done a video for quite a while, we've been so flat out. Um, so I'm just going to do this, it's a very basic uh, service adjustment. Uh, this vehicle, which is uh, a 2012 Passat CC, CBB engine, um, has had a new DPF elsewhere, it's been around the garages, they've tried various tools to do a DPF reset on it, tell it's had a new one fit in, uh, fitted, reset the ash count uh, and the suck count, um, and no one's been successful with it. Um, I'm going to show you on auto um, how to do it the simple way, um, and if you do use Aldis, uh, which is the dealer system, you'll see the similarities between this and Aldis. Um, so we've already gone into the basics. We're going to go into guided functions. We're going to select the control unit that we require, which is going to be in the engine control unit. What we're going to do now is we're going to adapt the adaptation values for the particulate filter. Um, so we're going to tell it we've fitted a new particulate filter. Just explains there uh, what you're doing and how have you replaced, replaced the uh, diesel particulate filter. Um, a lot of people use this function um, to get the DPF lights out, which if your DPF is blocked, it, it's wrong and you do have chances of obviously setting it on fire. Um, so we're going to say yes, it was replaced. Uh, it's going to say we're now going to replace everything to zero. Start the engine and allow it to idle, which it is doing. Take it up to 1500 RPM. I'm going to guess this. So it's adapting it now. Switch ignition off. So we've got 40 seconds now, um, and then it's going to uh, adapt and check the adaptations, check the back pressure, check the temperatures to make sure everything's okay on there. Um, while we're waiting for this, point to note, if you are trying to fool the system and you are trying to say that you fit a new DPF and you haven't, if the differential pressure or the back pressure is higher than the allowed value, uh, which on this is about 10 millibar, it actually won't allow you to do this. Um, so you do need to make sure that you, you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, so now we're going to switch ignition on. Done. Zero, zero. We're not in the clear yet because it's now going to test. Done. Start the engine. Start the engine. Done. Got the values now before the turbocharger, before the DPF. Um, so, this is obviously going to carry out some checks to see obviously why the DPF wasn't regening make sure that the DPF uh, temperatures are changing so that they are actually working. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up to about 2000 RPM and we're going to make sure that the figures are changing, which they are. Um, before the DPF it always takes a, a bit slower than just after the turbo. Um, as you can see, they are changing. We're going to press done. Were the temperature correct values? Yes, they were. Now it's going to do the differential pressure sensor. Now I think this one is particularly low because they, I think they fit an aftermarket version. Um, but in live data, you can actually get the uh, um, the back pressure there to rise. Um, this may pose um, a problem in the future for this car. Um, but let's see if this was successful in the permissible range. That's it. Um, so that is the DPF now reset on this vehicle. It'll be out of limp mode and there'll be no more uh, lights or anything like that. Cheers. Bye-bye.